Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We gotta talk about Brittany Griner, who just received some terrible news uh, that she will more than likely continue to break big rocks into little rocks in a Russian prison as her appeal of her nine-year prison sentence has been denied by Russian courts, which again is terrible news for her. As the days go by, it looks like it's more and more likely that she's going to spend a substantial amount of time in that Russian prison. Now, before I read about this, uh, I want to just go ahead and catch you guys up on how Brittany Griner is doing because she just had her 32nd birthday, which again, is, is unfortunate for a million dollar athlete to be spending their 32nd birthday uh, in a Russian prison. But at the same time, considering how she did not appreciate our country and all the rights and freedoms that she had here, she thought that she was oppressed because she's black and gay. Um, hey, it's kind of fitting, right? It is kind of fitting. I only can feel so bad if you simply just appreciated the country. And if you did this, Guys, I kid you not. I almost cry <laughs> every time I hear the national anthem. Like, I'm so serious. That's the one song that will bring me to tears instantly. Okay. And I don't cry a lot. Right. But that song, the national anthem will bring me to tears. And I have no shame about it because I love this country. And Brittany Griner should have loved her country more. Okay. And if she loved her country more, then I would have more sympathy for her. However, because she didn't, uh, hey, you know, it is what it is. I, I don't think that she should be in jail for what she did for nine <laughs> years, but it's not my country. I don't, I don't make the laws. OK, so with that being said, let's actually uh, check in with Brittany Griner's wife, uh, who is going to give us an update on how Brittany Griner is doing, because apparently she's feeling so bad that uh, she doesn't even want to play basketball in the Russian prison. Because apparently it is uh, too painful to practice. But this is Brittany Griner's wife giving us an update on, on her situation, how she's doing. So you were able to hear her voice. You've had two phone conversations with her. Share with us what you can about those conversations. So the first conversation, um, it was just so delightful just to hear her voice. At that point, I was like, you know what? I think she's okay. We can... We can, we can survive this. Mm -hmm. The second phone call, I just, the minute I hung up, I think I cried for about two, three mm -hmm. days straight. I did not get out of my bed. It was the most disturbing phone call I'd ever experienced. Um, and I've known BG 11 years. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, that was the most disturbing what conversation. What was disturbing to you? It was her. Like you could, you could, you could hear it. Like you could hear, that she was not okay. You know, if you think about just a person suffering and when they have suffered to a max, like you could hear that like she was at the max that day. And I'm like, God, and there was nothing I could do, you know? So I'm sitting there and I'm just like, it was like 30 seconds to two minutes of range. Mm -hmm. We're just sitting on the phone, just literally in tears, just mm -hmm. crying. Mm -hmm. And it's just the most still, I think moment I've just ever shared with my wife, I didn't have words. Cause at that point I'm like, I don't know if she has anything left in her tank to continue to wake up every day and be in a place where she has no one. Yeah, so it sounds like Brittany Griner is not doing too well in that Russian prison. Again, I, I can imagine that it's not a very fun place to be in. Uh, they're probably not treating her um, great, right? So. With that being said, uh, let's go ahead and read about uh, the Russian courts denying her appeal and having her nine-year prison sentence upheld. A Russian court rejected 
Brittany Griner's appeal of her nine-year prison sentence for drug possession on Tuesday. The court ruled to uphold the sentence handed down to the WNBA star. However, in the ruling, the court stated that time Griner will have to serve in prison will be recalculated with her time in pretrial detention taken into account. One day in pretrial detention will be counted as 1.5 days in prison, which means Griner will serve around eight years in prison unless the U.S. and Russia come to an agreement on a potential prisoner swap in the future. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan released a statement after the sentence was upheld. Quote, we are aware of the news out of Russia that Brittany Griner will continue to be wrongfully... <laughs> I love how they still use this word wrongfully detained under intolerable circumstances after having to undergo another sham judicial proceeding today. President Biden has been very clear that Britney should be released immediately. The statement read, quote, in recent weeks, the Biden Harris administration has continued to engage with Russia through every available channel and make every effort to bring home Britney, as well as to support and advocate for other Americans detained in Russia, including fellow wrongful detainee Paul Willem. The president has demonstrated that he is willing to go extraordinary lengths and make tough decisions to bring Americans home, as his administration has done successfully from countries around the world. The administration remains in regular touch with representatives of the families, and we continue to admire their courage in the face of these unimaginable circumstances. Griner was arrested at the airport in Moscow, Russia. We all know what she was arrested for. Griner's lawyers uh, said Monday the WNBA star was not expecting any miracles Quote, she is very nervous waiting for the appeal hearing. Brittany does not expect any miracles to happen, but hopes that the appeals court will hear the arguments of the defense and reduce the term. They said in a statement Monday via Rutgers. The White House has mentioned the potential of a prisoner swap. National Security Council coordinator John Kirby said in September that Russia has not responded to the substantial proposal the United States offered back in July, a deal that includes former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan. Quote, they have not responded to our offer. We have made a serious offer to get Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan back home. Kirby said at the time, the Russians have not responded to that offer, but that doesn't mean that we're, that we're not still in negotiations. Quote, we want them to accept it. Frankly, these two individuals ought to be home anyway, period. But we understand that that's probably going to have to be the result of the negotiating process, one that we're willing to participate in honestly and fully. And we've been doing that. And we await them to take the offer that's on the table. Okay, so yeah, she's been in prison or Russian detention for about eight months, right? Uh... You know, now it's her 32nd birthday. She spent that over there in Russia. It's unfortunate. Uh, but it looks to me like Russia's not budging on this. Okay. And, and I think the reason why they're not budging, and this is what people aren't talking about. And I'm surprised that the woke revolutionaries aren't taking this stance, but I, I actually know why they're not taking this stance. I think Russia's not budging on it because of the war in Ukraine. As long as the war in Ukraine is going on, I don't think that Russia is going to make any moves on this because that is leverage. Right. I think that probably what Russia wants more than anything is less Western and European involvement in the war in Ukraine. And quite honestly, that's probably better negotiating leverage than a prisoner swap. Right. I mean, I'm just I'm just saying I, I don't I don't know that for certain. But if I was in Russia's situation, that is what I would want. Right. I'll be willing to negotiate if, you know, you would be less involved in Ukraine. So again, I, I'm kind of curious as to why the woke revolutionaries aren't coming out here and pressuring Biden to say, hey, you know what, maybe we should stop sending all this money to Vladimir Zelensky in Ukraine, uh, because that really is just giving Russia even more incentive to hold on to Brittany Griner. I mean, at the very least, I mean, that is something that I think that the American people would agree on in the sense that, uh, yeah, we probably shouldn't continue to keep funding uh, these wars, right, that really don't have all that much to do with us. But I'm just saying, I'm surprised that hasn't come up in the conversations about potential negotiations or uh, resolutions for how to incentivize Russia to release Britney Griner. But again, I can't talk about this story without always reminding people of the importance of responsibility and accountability, right? In the sense that Britney Griner put herself in that situation because she went to a foreign country with 
illegal narcotics. She broke the law. Okay, and when you break the law in another foreign country, you are subject to their rules. The United States is not going to always be able to help you, especially if we do not have friendly relations with that country. Brittany Griner shouldn't have went over there in the first place because she was warned not to go over there, right? But she went over there because she wanted money, okay? She wanted to play basketball for money, and she ended up putting herself in a situation where she became a political bargaining chip. And it's unfortunate, but hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. I only can feel so bad for her considering that she complained about the U.S. She hated the U.S. She didn't like the U.S. She was so oppressed here. And now, you know, she goes to a foreign country and she figures out what real oppression looks like. This is what real oppression looks like. In the United States court system, if she would have done the same thing here, she would be out of jail, right? She wouldn't even be uh, locked up. But in Russia, you don't get those same rights and privileges doesn't matter if you're gay, <laughs> doesn't matter if you're black, doesn't matter if you're a woman, doesn't matter if you're a superstar athlete. If they want to lock you up for any reason, they will. OK, and people need to understand that people need to be grateful for the fact they was born in this country. I don't care if you're black or a so-called person of color or LGBTQ or a woman. You need to be grateful that you live in the greatest country on earth. You have rights and privileges that other people on this planet simply do not have. And not enough people are appreciative of that. And I hope that what people are learning from this situation, again, is responsibility, self-accountability, understanding that you can't go to a foreign country and break the laws, okay, and expect to get uh, special treatment just because you're American, but also understanding and appreciating the fact that you are an American and that you were born in the greatest country on earth at the greatest time ever. And you should appreciate that, right? At least enough to stand for the national anthem, right? I'm just saying, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.